Hey, Mark Smelly Bell, do you ever miss carbohydrates? Do you ever miss carbs? Of course I miss carbohydrates. Are you kidding me? Man, I, I have been addicted to carbs for so long and have had a food addiction for such a long time. I want to point out before I get into this that I don't have, I don't think that there's anything wrong with carbohydrates other than the fact that a lot of processed foods contain uh, a lot of carbohydrates and a lot of times they, they contain a lot of fat as well. In fact, a lot of foods that we really love and we blame carbs for are actually very high in fat as well. Usually they have higher fat calories than they do carbohydrate calories. The problem is though, a lot of these processed foods are so hyper palatable. They taste so damn good that it makes it very difficult to stop, makes it very difficult to slow down your eating. And it ends up creating a lot of really bad habits because you end up snacking, you end up reaching for foods that you shouldn't, and then when it comes time for you to get the nutrients, the macronutrients and the micronutrients that your body needs, when that time comes, you're not hungry for it. Think about how many times you let a steak rot in your, uh, in your fridge or the times you've uh, let chicken go bad or whatever, whatever type of meat it was, you let it go bad in the fridge because you're con con constantly filling yourself up with snacks and filling yourself up with junk. Do I miss carbohydrates? I, I miss them badly. I do, I miss them, I miss them very severely. <laughs> um, I, I, I really and truthfully, honestly do. I have cravings every single day. Uh, when I walk by, you know, one of these places out here in, in we're in the Barlow in uh, Sebastopol, and I walk by one of these restaurants, and a smell will hit me, and I'm thinking pizza. Like I, I really want, I really want pizza. I enjoy eating. I enjoy having fun. I enjoy carbohydrates. In fact, I really do love them. And I know that some people are probably listening right now, and they're like, "Why don't you do if it fits your macros?" Well, because if it fits your macros, it doesn't fit my lifestyle, and it doesn't fit my beliefs. I believe more so in a, in a highly carnivorous style diet. Around 80% of your food, in my opinion, should come from meat. Everything else can kind of trickle from there if you want to mix in some fruit and some vegetables, whatever. Uh, I, think, I think you'll be just fine. You want to mix in some beans and some rice and some potatoes, stuff like that too. I think you're okay because how much of that food are you really going to eat? I realize that when you start to mix ingredients, and you should realize when you start to mix ingredients, let's just take uh, a steak for example. Steak is delicious, right? Let's chop up a steak, and let's now put it in a bowl, and let's put, mix uh, some rice in with it now. Well, now it tastes really good, right? It's a little bit easier to eat. You, in fact, you might even be able to eat more. In fact, I know you can eat more. There's a lot of science that shows that because you won't run into something called palate fatigue at that point. You start to mix ingredients together, you're able to eat more food. It encourages you, you to eat more food. And for those of you that really struggle with gaining weight, you can utilize that fact to your advantage. Now let's take that same steak and that same bowl of rice and let's pour some teriyaki sauce on there. Now we're really talking, right? Now we have something that is very hyper palatable. A lot of the carbohydrates that we really love and that we have grown up with are combinations of carbohydrates and fat together with very very little protein. The average American only consumes about 14 percent protein in their diet and I know and I'm telling you this right now that if that changed if that stat alone changed America would lose weight and if they could continue on with that they would not only lose weight because losing weight in America isn't a problem three out of four Americans lose weight and they do so nearly every year and then you lose significant amounts of weight, 20, 30, sometimes 40 pounds, but they gain it back. Gaining the weight back is a, is a huge issue. So sustaining the diet. You found a diet that you think you continue to eat less calories, you eat less food, and you start exercising. I'm starting on Monday. And you're running, and you're training, and you're going all in like an animal. But it's not something that you can sustain. And I know that when people think of the carnivore diet, it's January 18th, we're dead center in the middle of World Carnivore Month. They feel like that is not something that could be sustainable for them. It is a very sustainable diet. It depends on the style of person, it depends on the type of person, but it's been sustainable for me 
I'm enjoying it. I'm in, on day 18 of it, but I've also been flirting with this since I was a teenager and I'm 43 years old now. So if you, if you kind of understand that once you start to have influences of carbohydrates in your diet, that it can really have a huge negative impact on you because it can allow you, it's a gateway, it's an invitation. A lot of skateboarders out here. It's an invitation to start to eat more and more food. And it really makes it very difficult for your body, your brain, the hormones in your body to react properly to it. These things are overriding what our brain knows. These things are overriding what we're in tune with. And because of that, and for that reason, is the reason why we end up overeating so much food. I really do miss carbohydrates, I promise you. I, I'm not lying when I say I have the same urges, the same cravings, um, I have the same hunger, I deal with hunger just as you do. One thing that I wanna point out though, is I've been utilizing a lot of intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting has killed off the hunger hormone in my body. So I still get hungry, but it's a lot less the fasting has become easier. I used to fast for 12 hours and I used to do it every other day. Now, with some exceptions, I will eat breakfast here and there. Most of the time, I'll do like at least a 20 hour fast and it's easy. That's a, a normal day for me, I would say on average over the last maybe three months or so, is doing about an 18 hour fast. In some cases, I'll go a little further, go 20 hours, 23 hours and so on. <clears throat> but you can utilize a strategy like intermittent fasting to help, help kill off those really sharp and strong hunger pains that you get. They're brutal. It's really hard to overcome. And so when I decided that I was gonna start to abstain from carbohydrates, and when I decided that I was gonna start to get rid of carbohydrates, and I, my brother and I, Chris Borbell, Big Strong Fast on Instagram, when we came, locked horns and came together and we had a handshake about four years ago, at uh, Makuni, a sushi place in Davis. Me and my brother, we shook hands like they shake hands in Braveheart when they lock forearms together. We shook hands like that at a table and said, hey, let's do no carbs until the Mr. Olympia contest. And uh, then we were like, well, why should it end there? And, and then we started kind of saying stuff back and forth and kind of, uh, I think, I don't know if he said it or if I said it, but one of us said it. Uh, one of us said, let's, let's have a war on carbs. And that's what it's been ever since because me and my brother are fat kids. My whole family is fat. The whole Bell family is fat. Um, and anyone in the Bell family that's not fat, guess what they do? They exercise regularly. And in addition to that, they're on a carnivore diet. My aunt Arlene lost 18 pounds. Uh, my uncles lost like 40 pounds. My cousins lost like 50 pounds. And some of these people, they'll go up and down their body weight goes up and down. And even my, uh, my, my cousin, uh, uh, one of my cousins, he had gout in his feet and it was bothering him like crazy. He had a lot of pain. And we got him on a carnivorous style diet. I know, I know, you're not supposed to eat meat. That's what they tell you. Meat gets such a bad rap because they want you to eat more of those carbohydrates. They want you to eat more of that junk. But by getting on this style of diet, I swear to you, I'll bet everything that I got, I'll bet, I'll bet the whole slingshot company, I'll give it right to you. I'll hand it right over to you, I'll give you the keys for it. I'd bet anything that anyone that's listening to this, there might be some small variations, but anyone that's listening to this, a carnivore diet will help you. If we put America on a carnivore diet, if we put them on it today and issued a declaration and said, this is what you're eating across the board, men, women, children, elderly, everybody. The only result, the only thing that would happen is everyone would lose weight. And the only negative thing that would happen is people would come off their prescription medications. It's that powerful. I'm not saying it can help everybody. I'm not saying it's a cure all for everything all the time. But America's biggest problem is that we're too fat. And so by starting to attack the biggest problem, a lot of other problems will follow. Am I making sense? Are we on the same page? Are we on page 43? Anyway. Back to the question, Mark Smelly Bell, the people's coach, do you miss carbohydrates? The answer is hell yes. But what I don't miss is I don't miss being 330 pounds. I don't miss going for a walk, just not even trying to go for a walk because I was too fat to even try to go for a walk, but just walking from somewhere to somewhere. I don't miss my shins getting a pump from going on a walk. I don't miss my lower back being pumped when I tried to exercise. 
I don't miss my lower back being having such a pump. Uh, it fill up so much with blood. It would get so tight that I'd walk through the airport and halfway through walking from uh, my car to the gate, I had to sit down. Uh, I, I don't miss being winded. I don't miss having a hard time going up flights of stairs. I don't miss having a hard time uh, getting up and down from a chair. I don't miss having a difficult time getting in and out of my car. I don't miss uh, having sleep apnea. I don't miss uh, having my blood glucose so high that I was pre-diabetic. I don't miss any of that. I don't miss having blood pressure so high that I couldn't donate blood. So as much as I love carbohydrates and as much as I would love to indulge, I'd love to go inside this coffee shop right now and get some sort of like donut or cookie or something like that, I would absolutely love that. But there's no circumstance where I'm going to do that because as much as I love carbohydrates, I hate all the negative things that they can do to me personally. And when I say me personally, that's taking into account all the different things that make up Mark Smelly Bell. Uh, I have a really hard time abstaining from something that I like. So if I really like something, the, the only thing, if I really like something and it's something that's probably not in my best interest, the real option for me is to kind of get rid of it, or not even kind of get rid of it, is to get rid of it completely. That's always been the most helpful thing, is just to completely ditch stuff, to just have abstinence from that thing. Um, and look, it's not forever, and, and I will have, so I said no circumstances earlier, there's some circumstances where carbohydrates will pop up. Uh, it's not like I'll never eat uh, another uh, cookie bar from my mom ever again. It's not like I'll never have a pizza again. There will be some influences of those things, but i am actually been thinking, I've been tinkering around with the idea, and I kind of almost hate saying it on camera, but I was thinking of just going the entire year without carbohydrates. I went from, uh, I did no carbs till Christmas starting in like late October, and I did that from that period of time all the way through December. And the only carb-like things I had were a few keto things here and there. And so I was thinking about doing that for the entire year. A carnivore diet with keto uh, cheat meals was something I was, uh, I was considering. And I think, you know what, I think I'll just, something I gotta talk to my wife about it because sometimes these things, um, they, they impact the whole household, you know? And um, I, I've heard someone, ha they have a saying and they said, um, they said I went on a diet for a month and I lost 30 days. I like, I really like that quote. Think about it. You're, you're missing out on a lot of shit when you go on a diet. So it's time to bring this one in for a crash landing. Appreciate you watching it. Go ahead and hit the like button. Comment below. Uh, let me know what your, uh, your, your toughest thing is. Like, what's your favorite carb? What's your favorite carby thing that you love to snack on? Let me know what it is. We're going to pick somebody from the comment section. We'll pick three people from the comment section and I'll send you both of my books uh, The War on Carbs and Jacked and Tan. You can see how I train, how I used to train, all the powerlifting secrets are in there, how I train for my bodybuilding show, all that information is in there and then some. The War on Carbs is the greatest book ever written I think on low carbohydrate living because it's just a really quick easy manual for you to understand what you need to do. All the book tells you, all the book has in it is it simply just tells you what you need to do. There's not a bunch of bullshit in there. And it talks about like what kind of butter I use and what kind of uh, protein powder I use and what kind of this and what kind of that. It shows you everything. Everything's in there and it's like 70 pages. So I'm gonna send uh, a, few, a few people, uh, just all you gotta do to enter th this little contest is to uh, throw some comments in the comment section below. And please encourage people to subscribe to this channel. We are pumping out the best content on the internet. Uh, I'm giving you guys real world advice on how you can improve your life, on how you can change your life through diet, through exercise, and through being a goddamn savage. Strength is never a weakness. Weakness is never strength. Thank you so much for following along. Catch you all later.